Welcome to For Fox Sake, where we give zero fucks about money shame and talk about real life and finance, including the taboo behind it all. So grab your Monday morning caffeine and let's chat. Good morning, Foxton. I am so happy that you're here listening to For Fox Sake. Today, we are doing our Reddit episode, which if you're new here, the last Monday of the month, we go through Reddit posts and Joe tells me about them and we both react and talk about them. And it's meant to be a little mm, break from all of the doom and gloom that I usually talk about. (laughs) Not all the time, but, you know, we talk about some heavy topics here and sometimes it's just it, it gets to be a drag. So we wanted to bring some levity to the to the situation. So Joe is here. Hi. How you doing, Joe? I'm here. <laughs> OK. Anything going on in your life? Anything new? Still unemployed, still applying to job positions that don't actually exist. Mm, yes. Actually, why don't you tell the Fox Den about that situation? <laughs> Uh, yeah. So basically a bunch of corporations right now have job postings at all sorts of locations that aren't real. Um, so if you submit an application to it, you'll never hear back. And if you go and stop in and ask about it, sometimes they'll either say, uh, they're not hiring now, but they will be in a couple of months and they can't even see the applications at the local store. Uh, they have to wait for a corporate to open up the position and send the applications to them. Or the district manager of the Starbucks in Longmont has a hiring freeze in place, even though all of the doors on all of the locations have now hiring signs (laughs) and there's multiple job postings. um, And there's a bunch of other places that have now hiring signs for positions that don't exist that they're not hiring for. Um, Yeah, so that's that's been fun. Yeah. So that's what we're dealing with. But also um, tell everybody about, you know, your wood shop business. I make things from wood. Yep. Yep. That's it. Um, He has an Etsy page that you can like and follow. He has an Instagram page, which he's finally starting to put content up, a.k.a. I'm starting to help him put content up. Um, But yeah, that's that's something we're also focusing focusing on, just something a little more positive than um, the rejection because companies are garbage. Um. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what's going on in Joe's world, I guess. We're cutting a lot of wood lately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So <laughs> what's going on in my life? Um, As most of you know, there is a new closed community that I'm offering called Only Foxes. That name was actually Joe's idea, which I think is hilarious. If you want to join that, just click the link in the show notes. Also, we are starting our February 30 day money challenge. Um, I did this last year and I did it in January. I think it started January 1st. Um, And the only reason I didn't do that at that time this year is because I didn't have all of my ish together. So we're doing it in February. Yay. Um, so 600 plus people actually did this challenge last year and I thought it was really successful. I got a lot of good feedback from it. Um, Basically, what you do is you sign up via a link, which you can find in the show notes. You will be given an email where you can download this guide. It's about 50 pages. It has um, a budget tracker. It has a little booklet of resources and free things that you can get. It has a budget template that you can use, a note section, calendar, and it has resources that I usually give all of my clients or that I've given over the years on Instagram, but it's just condensed into a 50 page document. You'll get emails along um, during the challenge. And it's just a great way to either revisit what you've already done and make sure that you have the foundation set in place for your money goals. Or if you're new to budgeting, new to your financial journey, this is a really great place to start because it has everything all in one place and you don't have to compile anything like it's it's all right there for you. So we're starting that today. Um, So check out the show notes. Outside of that, I think that we can go ahead and get into these crazy Reddit episodes. Just as a reminder, I have never heard these stories before. This is the first time I'm hearing them. Joe scours the internet to look for the wildest things, usually money related and relationship related. Um, These are my real reactions, and we're just going to go ahead and get into it. All right, Joe, hit me with the first one. Am I the asshole for returning the money my husband took from my family for attending our cookout? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) 
For context, my husband comes from a wealthy family, and he himself has inherited a number of assets from his relatives. One of them is this huge house where we live right now, with a pool and a huge backyard with lots of features. We decided to host our first cookout after we got married seven months ago, and we invited both his and my family. That was on Friday. Both families came, and we had lots of fun, then everyone went home later. I then got a phone call from mom, and she didn't sound okay. She asked whether or not my husband took money from his family before they attended the cookout. I was confused. I asked what she was talking about, and she told me that my husband charged every single person from my side of family who attended the event $25. <laughs> Why do people do that? We had an, another one of these situations and another one of our Reddit episodes. Why do people think it's okay? Oh, is this a repeat? No, no, this isn't a repeat. Um, okay. The other one was her friends, her friend threw a party and oh, they charged the, for the, drinks. the drinks, yeah, the bar, the <laughs> quote unquote bar that was just bartended by the people hosting the party. Yeah, they, the, the, the hosts were charging people for the drinks that the hosts were serving. No, a, throwing a party with your friends and family and loved ones, you don't do a cover charge. I don't understand. <laughs> like if times are that tough, which they aren't because apparently he's wealthy. You you don't do that. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was utterly utterly shocked and very angry and felt like this has legitimately damaged my relationship with most of my family because almost all of them came over. Not just that, but he got two hundred and seventy five dollars from them. <laughs> uh, okay. I was so livid. I hung up the phone and confronted him immediately. He told me my family got to enjoy the space and view and said that I should think of it as a resort cookout since his house has lots of luxuries. Absolutely not. You are a classist, elitist scumbag. I told him it was a horrible thing for him to do. And that what made it worse is the fact that his family didn't pay like mine had to. He laughed, then reminded me that his family gave him this house. <laughs> I demanded he give the money back, but he said no. And that he won't even give it to me since the house is technically his. No, that is divorce. Mm. That's divorce. I there went, are so many layers to that. I went and took the money and gave everyone who paid their money back with a sincere apology from me. My husband found out and flipped out at me calling what I didn't did and overstepping and disrespectful. No. I told him he shouldn't have taken money from my family for being guests at our house, but he corrected me saying it's his house and said that he'd bet my family had never got to attend a cookout at a house like this and that it was just $25, but I disrespected him and went behind his back and took money that wasn't mine. No, 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 man. Wow. Um, it's not about the party. It's about respect. It's about understanding money uh, on the same wavelength. Mm -hmm. It's about ownership. It's about power. Um, it's about <laughs> elitism. <laughs> so she needs a divorce. I, I know it sounds like you would divorce somebody or yes, I would. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah, no, it's, that's awful. <laughs> yeah, no, because if this is how he just respects for her over a party, like, this is how he's going to act for everything monetary in their life. It's not her place. She's below him. She's a second class citizen in her own marriage. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. No. Whew. Is there a follow up for this? Uh, not on that one, no. Okay. Well, I hope there will be later and I hope she divorces his ass. <laughs> All right. Next. Yeah. My girlfriend and I adopted our friend who identifies as a cat into our family. I think I've fallen in love with her. Please help. Ooh, meow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to try to guess the ages of these people? Like 18? Mm, no. 19? No. Okay, I don't know. I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read the story first. Okay. For context, over COVID last summer, my girlfriend Sarah and I wanted an emotional support animal. However... <laughs> Uh. <sighs> However, here's where things get a little different. A little she, different, huh? She brought up the idea of adopting her friend Lucy, who identifies as a cat instead of an actual animal. I was a bit reluctant at first, but she convinced me to give it a shot. Honestly, things have been pretty great. It was a little strange at first getting used to having Lucy around, always acting as a cat, but I quickly warmed up to both her and the idea. I don't, this cannot be real. This can't be real. Mm. 
This would not be the most surprising thing I've read on the Internet. Oh, God, that's terrifying. (laughs) Since I was and am working from home and Sarah was deemed an essential worker, Lucy and I spent a lot of time alone, spent a lot of alone time together beginning last summer. When working from home in my office, Lucy would kind of just hang out doing cat like things such as brushing up against my legs and trying to jump into my lap. It quickly grew on me and became more and more attractive. I found myself sexually fantasizing about her frequently the more time we spent together. Initially, I was able to control the urges, but as time went by, eventually one thing led to another, and Lucy and I entered into a consensual sexual relationship behind Sarah's back. No. No. At first, it was only a casual affair, but as time went on, I started falling in love with Lucy. Does this count as bestiality? (laughs) No. She identifies as a cat. Yeah, but that's not real. Okay. That's... You know, I was just... mm, That's... (sighs) This is just, this is a nightmare. This is a nightmare story. Why did you do this to me? The only problem is I'm also still very in love with Sarah, but Lucy fills a completely different void in my life. I would very much like to maintain the relationships I have with them both by entering into a polyamorous relationship or by becoming a thruple. My question is, how should I go about raising this question to them both without it making it weird? Um... <laughs> You should not enter into a polyamorous relationship on the grounds of lying and cheating. Uh, yeah, no. That's not. No. No. The, the time to have that conversation is before the affair begins. Before you have an affair with your roommate, cat lady, cat, cat. Yeah. As a lady. No. <laughs> um, no. That's my final answer is No. Also, I just really hate them using terminology like identifies as yeah. for something like identifies as a cat. No, you're because not. it just it really frivolous. It makes it. Well, it makes light of transgender identities. Yeah, it, it diminishes the the gravity of uh, the trans identity. Yeah. Uh, no. OK, was there a follow up on that one? No. Oh, God. No, I there's, there's don't no even follow up. I don't even want days. to know. <laughs> All right. Next. Am I the asshole for tipping ten dollars on a three hundred dollar bill? Yep. <laughs> next. Yes. <laughs> next. Um, my girlfriend and I went out to lunch with my daughter. The poster and the girlfriend are both 38 and the daughter is 18. My daughter told me previously that she could have sworn that she had seen my girlfriend take cash away from the table after I had tipped and everyone else was heading out and not paying attention. I felt like I needed to give my girlfriend of a year who I am madly in love with the benefit of the doubt since I've never noticed her doing that. There has also been an instance where my girlfriend's sister apologized for her to a flight attendant and my daughter construed her behavior as being nitpicky and dismissive. I think my girlfriend was just stressed from work. So there's a pattern. Okay. We are at a place where servers are known for quick and attentive service. I wanted to show them that I was grateful for their professionalism, so I wrote down a $65 tip on the tab and specifically brought cash because I know servers prefer cash tips. Also, first of all, this is really confusing the way he describes this because I think he wrote down the size of the cash tip on the thing, which is... Don't do that. Just write down cash if you're tipping in cash. Yeah. (laughs) That's weird. Mm -hmm. $65 on a... $300 $300 bill is like 21, 22%. That's yeah. not like showing your appreciation. That's just kind of the bare minimum. Yeah. You're not saying I wanted to show them that I was grateful for their professionalism. So, so I paid them the bare, like the, that's the standard tip amount. That's yeah. if I want to show somebody, it just me personally, if I want to show a server that like, wow, you did a really amazing job. I think you're fantastic. I'm definitely going to come here again. You were part of the experience. I tip 30% or higher. Yeah. That's what we did last time we went to Waffle House. <laughs> Balling. <laughs> yeah. It was a $38 total after our <laughs> incredible tip. Well, Jonathan was a really good server. So yeah, it was really great. He was great. Um, yeah. So 20% is just the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. My girlfriend said she was going to the restroom and I said I'd go get our car from valet. My daughter lingered back near the entrance. And then when I get the car, I find her arguing with my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. She told me she caught her swiping 55 bucks from the, 
off the table and walking away. And that other diner saw it too. Jesus Christ. She started saying, shame on you. Didn't you used to be a waitress? My girlfriend snapped back that she did. And then she worked her way up and never was entitled. Um, so I guess you worked your way up to being entitled to somebody else's tip. Yeah, you worked your way up to being an asshole. Congrats. She, she handed me back the cash and said she felt the tip was excessive. The, the 21% the, tip was excessive. So she made it so that it was like a four or five percent. tip. God, you have a lot of like elite mm. stories today and I am <laughs> elitist, not elite, elitist stories. And it's it's making my stomach turn like this is. <sighs> This is not how you treat service people. This is not how you treat people in your life. Upscale restaurant didn't mean the server deserves more. So apparently it means the server deserves much, much less. Apparently the server needs to be on snap. (laughs) My daughter demanded that one of us go back to tip the waitress enough. I told her that I'm sure that we already made a small scene. So let's just go. No, I didn't want to go back and embarrass my girlfriend and make people wonder why there were drastic changes in the tip. There were already drastic changes in the tip. Everyone was already wondering that because they saw her taking the money off the table. Oh, my God. So I ended up just telling my daughter that she could have tipped in her place back there. She works as an ACT tutor for her classmates. But what's done is done. I don't feel great about it because the waitress seemed to have had only three tables in the two out plus hours we were there. Two plus hours and he tipped 21 percent. Oh, my God. I hate this. I hate everything about this. But I didn't want to make things worse for my girlfriend, who I hope if she dines here again, will just tip more next time. Am I the asshole? Uh, Yes. I feel like everybody but your daughter is an asshole and the server, obviously. Yeah, like this this woman has like you're condoning that you're condoning that behavior. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, well, let's not make a scene. First of all, she made a scene by taking money off the table by stealing money from a table, <laughs> stealing a hardworking server's yeah. money. You, she, she stole money from the server. Oh, my gosh. I so, so the scene was already made. Second of all, sometimes it's it's OK to make a scene when someone is in the wrong. Also, you shouldn't be dating somebody that does that. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, he already excuses her being awful to a flight attendant. Yeah. By saying that she was just stressed from work when she was so bad to a flight attendant that her own sister apologized to the flight attendant on her behalf. No, I <laughs> pay attention to how the people in your life treat service people. And that will tell you a lot about who they are as a person mm-hmm. and um, act accordingly. That's. Yeah. My advice on that one. <laughs> Did y'all know I have a one-on-one financial coaching program? Well, now you do. The V Frugal Fox one-on-one financial coaching program is open and taking applications. I provide personalized guidance and support to those who need an action plan and financial blueprint right now. My services are tailored to meet the unique needs of folks with neurodivergence and mental health disorders, those navigating financial trauma, the LGBTQIA plus community, as well as active duty and veteran families. During our time together, we'll create a budget, map out attainable money goals, and create a financial plan that works for you, not against you. Click the link in the show notes today for more information. Now let's get back to the episode. All right, next. Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend she shouldn't work at the same place as her dad? Mm, Continue. Okay. I want you to raise your hand when you decide if they're an asshole or not. Okay. Because there's going to be a certain point about a third of the way to the story. All right. Where the person immediately outs themselves as terrible. Okay. Actually, it's not a third of the way into the story. It's the first line in the second paragraph. Okay. My girlfriend, 23, currently works at the same place as her dad. I, 25, think that she shouldn't because she shouldn't rely on her family to get her jobs. It's a bit weird that she'd want to work at the same place as her father. She should expand her her horizons and branch out. Another reason why I think she shouldn't work there is because it's a union. Yep, hand up. <laughs> <laughs> Ding. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't agree with unions, but I try not to talk to her about why that much because she doesn't listen. Uh, no, she just doesn't fucking agree with you because you're an idiot. I once tried to explain how... Tried explaining how unions aren't good, and she rolled her eyes at me. (laughs) She should have dumped him right then and there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She told me that we can disagree on some things, but I shouldn't try to push my beliefs on her because I can't change her mind. 
Now, here's where I might be the asshole. <laughs> this is where? <laughs> Sorry, bud, you missed that a paragraph back. Oh, man. My friend recently got a job similar to hers at a plant that isn't involved in a union. Him and I talked about it, and he mentioned how if she wants to work on cars so bad that she should that she should get a job there. It's interesting how he doesn't mention any difference in pay or benefits or conditions or anything. Mm -hmm. She came over to my place after taking her older brother shopping the other day. So I started with explaining to her that she's too old to be working with a family member, especially her dad, and that she shouldn't rely on them for jobs. I explained my other reasons, too. Then I told her about my friend's new job, how they aren't part of a union. She asked me this. Why is it wrong for her to work at the same place as her dad when they don't work the same shift together? She's second and apparently he's third. They don't work in the same part of the plant and they work in completely different positions. I had a feeling he was higher up than her. He never talks about his work to me, but she talks about her own. I said that people most likely think that her dad pulled some strings to get her there since normally people like her don't work there. OK, and let people think what they want. Mm. <laughs> interesting. Normally, people like her don't work there. Mm -hmm. She got in my face and called me a misogynistic asshole. He yep. puts misogynistic in quotes. <sighs> <Whew>. <laughs> she started ranting about how there are plenty of women her age and older that work there. I'm not sure if she was telling the truth. Oh my! Why? Why wouldn't she be? She also went on about how her dad isn't able to do that sort of thing and that he didn't pull any strings and nobody thinks it's weird that his daughter works there. She said most of the people there don't even know him or her like that. I tried defending myself and she started repeating, is it weird that my grandpa also works there? Does that mean my grandpa pulled strings from my dad? What about my uncle? She got angrier when I told her no <laughs> and left. I talked to my friends about it and they all said I'm in the right. No. Stu's friends are also apparently idiots. I can see where this uh, idea but I, is I texted her younger brother because it's been two days and she hasn't contacted me. My messages didn't go through when I messaged her either. He told me I'm a sexist asshole. So I think she used his phone to text me because I was called sexist and also blocked. He doesn't believe that uh, another man would call him sexist. <laughs> I guess it must have been a woman. It had to have been her. But it could have been him. And I keep thinking about how that could have been her younger brother. And now I'm wondering if I am an asshole for how I went about it. So am I an asshole? Should I have just kept it to myself? It's not because of how you went about it. It's the belief. It's because you went about it in the first place. Yeah. It's two people that have very different views in the world in general. It's because you're an idiot and she's too good for you. Knowing nothing else about her. Yeah, I know that she isn't like you, which means that she's too good for this guy. Yeah, no, no, immediately. No, I'm yeah. sorry. Ugh. Yeah. Again, right. how people treat the working class. That's yeah. All you got to know. <laughs> Unions are bad. Really tells you everything you need to know about somebody and it, their critical thinking. It really does. Um, yeah. OK, last one. All right. Last one. All Are right. you ready for this? I'm not ready. Buckle up because it's a doozy. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry. You got to keep this in here. Your laugh is great. <laughs> uh, hey, even when I just look at the title and I remember the contents of the story and it makes me laugh. Oh, God. Okay. I'm Now I'm excited. <laughs> I just measured my girlfriend's ass. Something isn't right here. Help. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Just jumping right in. Let's go. <laughs> OK, so I just mentioned my girlfriend's ass. Radius equals seven centimeters from pretty much butthole to end of cheek. Um, This man has autism. Half circumference equals 25 centimeters, roughly. Hard to know where the thickness ends. The thickness. Thickness. He, he spells it with two C's. Nice. So the thickness ends. If I'm mathing right here. Uh, so he's got it all written out. Uh, and then he converts it into pounds and he reaches uh, 1.67 pounds per cheek. Uh, so I said, hell nah, that cheek is way more than one and a half pounds. Gives out the entire thing. He comes to two and a half pounds. TLDR, my girlfriend's right cheek appears to weigh something in the range of one and a half to two and a half pounds. And given the size of that juicy pooper, I found this hard to believe. Three to five pounds total. So am I adjusting wrong? Having the value 
volume or does this sound right? Fellas, measure those dump trucks and report back. It's for science. P.S. If you ask for pics, I'll send you mine. Pale, hairy, man ass. Stay focused. I have nothing to say about this, so um, we're going to end there. <laughs> I'm glad that this story gave Joe a giggle. I just love this dude just getting really upset about his, his calculations <laughs> and them being potentially incorrect. All right. Uh, well, Fox, <laughs> we're, sometimes it gets a little wild here. Um, talking about dump truck asses being measured. You never know what you're going to hear on this podcast. <laughs> All right. I hope uh, with that, you have a great week. Um, and we will see you next week for a interview with Haley and Justin Brownwoods from Price of Avocado Toast. We are going to be talking about the validity of online budget coaching. So tune in for that. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye, Fox Den. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this week's episode of For Fox Sake. If you want more content like this, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and threads at vfrugalfox. And don't be a stranger. I respond to followers and love feedback from my community. If you want to make my day and help this podcast reach more people, please consider giving a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. A special thanks to Kaylee Johnson, Heather Devoki, and Joseph Bogomel. See you next week. And remember, do it with an open heart and no attachment to the result. 